This is the uh, DMG Murray production planning and control. It's a FAT client. That means it runs on the um, desktop. As you see, it's a desktop application. Uh, no uh, Explorer or browser required to use it. And um, yeah, I will introduce you. You can always interrupt me. Um, you can raise your hand or just just uh, interrupt me. Can be a dialogue. Doesn't need to uh, talk uh, all by myself. So we can have a dialogue and go through the different uh, functions and features of the software. Um, we have on the left side a navigation tree. And on the upside, we have a menu bar. The different functions I will explain later to you. I will first of all go through the uh, navigation tree. As you see, we have two different kind of data which we can manage uh, within the software. We have the master data and we have the process data. Upside with both uh, objects, we can also do settings um, which uh, are required for the planning. For example, um, planning strategies can be set here and we have also reports. The reports are uh, tabulary or graphical. Okay. So, uh, the most important uh, the, in this navigation tree is usually the pro, uh, master data and the process data. Uh, the difference between the master data and the process data is that the process data can be changed. So, it can be a, a production order, which status can be either in process or it can be done. Um, the master data is usually data which are required for the planning. For example, we can add workers, work centers, uh, our materials, we can create bill of materials, we can create routings, we can set priorities and so on. All the data which we create here are uh, going to be part of the later uh, processing uh, automatic planning. So, um, let me go on. I'm going to show you what you are waiting for. Uh, this is the control center. Uh, as you mentioned, we have here a visual or graphical view of the production orders, which has been already automatically scheduled by the system. Uh, on the left side, we see our resources. This resources, if I uh, merge this, you can see uh, on the left side, it's a German described works uh, name and on the right side is the English version. We have here the um, work centers, workbench preparation, cuttings and so on. We have your work center groups, like a perform center, for example, and uh, within this group are several different work centers, uh, three of one kind, for example, in this case. And further below, we are gonna have also stuff, um, which is also given if I uh, just visualize the tools, we have also production resources or tools which can be added into our production plan. So it means, for example, if I need a drill, I can sched uh, schedule my orders in a way the drills are used as well, and I can set the availabilities of each resource, uh, and this can be also planned. Um, so far, so good. So we have uh, in our control center the opportunity to search or to find, or search and find. We can even search by ID, name, due date, priority ID, etc., etc. Um, if I switch to the default view and, for example, um, click here on this button, I visualize all my work centers. This is only uh, assistant functions to visualize um, objects like work centers, staff, or tools. Mm -hmm. I can set also all three on or none of them. Um, this is the default view, so I see on the left side my resources and uh, the production orders are attached to them on the right side, right of the resources, but I can also change to uh, um, resource view. There you can see this is the production order view. It means I have, um, no, that's a default view, um, but I can also switch to the production order view, but then I need to choose a production order. So if, if I go back to the default view, for example, I click on a production order. 
I click to show production order view. Oh, it didn't work. No. So, uh, okay. I don't know. So we have here then uh, the network of the production order. So it means it starts here on the workbench preparation and I, I can follow the lines. Uh, with, this is the routing and I see the next operation or the next operations and I have here an overlapping and I go then to the cutting center, which is split it in two parts and I finalize here in the coating. That's my production order. One thing, so, I'm sorry here. Uh, so uh, here we see that we can uh, group machines. This is something which was uh, important for you. So as you can yeah. uh, see in this uh, group, so it's automatically goes uh, for uh, free machines as we have it group as uh, as free. So that could be important for you because I remember we discussed about it. So mm. yeah, you can create also an own views uh, if you go here to new, for example, and choose only the perform center. And uh, so you can only uh, limit the view to to the required um, uh, only rec uh, the work centers which are needed for the view. So, for example, if you have different departments, you can create different views for each department and set the work centers here, and then they will uh, occur. So I go back to default. So you have also the opportunity to create several own views or copy existing ones. And you have also the opportunity to set the colors. The default color is usually set like every uh, production order has its own color. As you can see here, these are different colors. And if you um, have delays, for example, this one, it's going to be red. So red. Uh, red production orders in the default view are always delayed ones and you can also see only the uh, delay status. If you go here uh, to the default colors, choose delay, go to traffic light and then you see once in, in one view you can see which orders are, are uh, on time, which are nearly on time or which, which are nearly delayed. Uh, so the uh, we don't don't have so much time to uh, waste here in the yellow ones or which one are already delayed. You can it's not allowed to do any changes in that plan. As you see, I can't move anything from A to B. Um, doesn't work. This is because the automatic planning doesn't allow this, but I will show you later also how you can do manual changes. Any questions so far to the um, control center? No, everything is okay. Thank so you. so far, so simple. Um, I will explain you some of the um, master data now. Um, mm -hmm. We can either go through everyone, or I can just select the most important ones for you. Uh, if something is not so important, you can just say skip. Uh, the materials usually uh, usually is the first thing you start with if you don't have an API. Um, so the materials are. Uh, either your uh, products or it can be so it's uh, like finished material or it's raw material so material which is needed to produce uh, mm -hmm. the products uh, can I, sorry can i yeah. add the portizing part too raw uh, material portizing. yes yes you, you can do it yeah you can do it and then for example this one it's a spring socket um you, you can see here it's an in-house production or it can be also purchased. Aye. Yeah. Um, usually you have a bill of material, uh, which is uh, clarifying um, how to handle with the materials here. So we create here everything we need for production. Um, it can be yeah, spring sockets, it, it can be suspensions, uh, assembly kits, whatever raw material mm -hmm. liquids oils uh, uh, etc can you uh, you need to list that, them all here uh, but you need to separate okay is it now material or is it the production tool for example uh, oil is something which is not so clear currently some customers use it as materials some customers use it as uh, uh, production tools or resources um, this are something we need to clarify in the prog uh, project. Um, yeah, but 
but you, you said right, we have materials which can be also purchased. Then I need to select uh, select this item here and uh, set how much time I would wait for it, for example. And in general, in every uh, master data objects, you have uh, the same options actually. You have here the option to edit data. You have the option to create a new data object or you have the option to copy the currently one or to delete them. Uh, also other more, so data modifications and uh, user de defined fields, um, these are, I think, now not so important, so I just skip them. Um, but if, if you go to every master data, you're gonna see uh, the options like this. You have here the ID, you, uh, which is always mandatory and it needs to be unique per uh, data object. And by the way, data objects are these folders here. So materials is a data object, organization groups is a data object. These are actually tables, uh, uh, databases, where is data sets given, uh, listed below, and these are called data objects in our case. So, um, but every single one, is it material or is it, for example, a worker? It looks the same actually. We have here the ID, the name and informations. Name and informations are optional. ID is always required. Um, so then I have so here the, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, can you open the raw, materia, uh, raw materials? One, one position, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, here I have a position for the max waiting period for the material. Uh, Mm, the deliver time the uh, deliver time for our for example client because uh, no i have a question uh, can i connect uh, this program with uh, for example comarch or sap when i have the stock for our uh, material yeah we have sap uh, interfaces um, if you have, for example, SAP Business One VO, uh, there is already an existing interface which needs to be adjusted for your use case and uh, you can connect uh, SAP with our planning solution. What comes to Comar, I don't really know yet. If you would like to, I can, um, I can um, send it afterwards to you if I have clarified it with my colleagues, but I'm not sure about Comar. Mark, I think not yet, by, uh, Mr. Crystal. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't hear about it. Not yet done, uh, but uh, as uh, we said, uh, we have uh, SAP, uh, so SAP uh, business, that's uh, no problem. We can include it in the implementation, but uh, Comark is, uh, well, uh, as I know, it is not on our uh, list. So what we can do, we can uh, build the uh, API REST uh, for for that, so mm -hmm. then we can we can transfer the data. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I go to the units. As you can see, we have already units uh, provided from the system, which are uh, usually uh, always uh, attached uh, in the materials objects. So which units are delivered out of the box from us? Uh, if you want, you can create more. I can show you, for example, uh, Stück. Stück means pieces, also here the English one. And you can see also the con uh, conversions uh, to, into other units. Um, pieces, one pieces is one Stück. And you, we have the same, I think, also with maybe miles and kilometers. Yeah, as you see. Uh, if you didn't know, one mile is 1.6 kilometers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Our, um, it's 160,934.4 centimeters and you can do conversions with other units as well or you can create own ones if uh, required. Uh, it's just a little feature. Uh, this is already given out of the box. You don't have to do this. We provide this already. I go further and go to the next object, which is optimization groups. So, um, really interesting, uh, but I don't want to uh, dive too deep into the organization groups now. So organization groups just um, show you which uh, work centers or which um, 
either work centers or routings or staff or uh, qualifications can be grouped into one unit. For example, here the equip lock nut. We have here one routing attached to this. We have the dynamic uh, setup on and um, yeah, that's actually it. So we can uh, group several other objects into one optimization group. I think um, this would go no far, way too far. So I, I don't want to uh, dive too deep into this topic because not so important for our showcase now. I would um, continue with the work time models. We have different options here. We have um, the most important two um, tables here or the objects are the shifts and the shift models. In the shifts, we uh, just set the availability and uh, offline times of um, resources. For example, in this case, um, we have the early shift six days long, which means I have uh, from Monday to uh, Saturday um, this availability is from 6 to 8.30, from 8.30 to 9 is a break. We have from 9 to 12 uh, again work time, then half an hour break, a lunch break, and we have uh, two and a half hours of remaining work of the shift, and this goes six days long. Um, I can also show a late shift or night shift. It's actually the same with other uh, availabilities of any resources. These shift models are now, or these shifts are not really attached to something currently, but to the shift models. A shift model, for example, can include, uh, in this case, the personal shifts. So the staffs, which uh, probably are rotating between the early, uh, late and night shift so we have three shifts attached to one shift model just to uh, model the uh, rotating shifts for example if i would now start with the early shift then i uh, and i am assigned to the uh, uh, the this shift is assigned to my uh, personal uh, object in this uh, pro, uh, in the software so it means like this stuff is uh, this uh, shift model is attached to me it would mean for me if I start with the early shift in this week, but I need to do the late shift next week and the night shift on the week after. Um, we have the option to uh, difference the shifts from the shift models, so we can create different shift model models in order to assign, for example, shift models to stuff which has breaks as well, or to machines which usually usually doesn't has have breaks if not required. For example, this is a shift model from a machine. You see we have here the shift model and we have the shift uh, below, which is attached to the shift model, which mean, uh, which is the uh, three shift schedule machines, five days, and this is here, uh, this one. So I have always uh, a relationship between a shift model and the shift. So one shift models, a one shift model can include at least one shift or more. One shift is always usually having at least uh, is assigned into in one shift model. So uh, to uh, describe it in a technical way. Um, was that clear? I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> the shift between uh, the difference between shift models and shifts. Uh, you are on you are muted i think we recognize the the difference so I all think right okay okay i'm always struggling with describing the, uh, shift models and shifts it's really uh, challenging me to do it in english so i wasn't really sure but if it's it was clear if it was clear it's fine cool um let's con let's continue with the work centers gonna be more interesting for you i guess um, so al always the same options. We can uh, create new ones or we can edit. Or we can create new ones. We can copy, we can delete. ID is always required, as I said. Name is optional. Uh, also the informations. Speed factor, that means um, the, the times which I have maintained in the routings, how would they influence if I would, uh, for example, select this work centers? If I choose 100 percent 
it only means the um, operation which is scheduled for one hour in this work center would run one hour. If I would now choose 200%, it would mean that the same operation would only last 30 minutes. So it's uh, as twice as fast as usually. Um, then I have here the attachment or the uh, link to the shift model as I also described before. I see the idea of the ship model and I see uh, with which shift to start. Um, as I also mentioned before, I can choose if I have different shifts in one shift model, I can choose which one I want to start with. And I can set here uh, starting and end dates. These are optional, doesn't really require to do. Um, I have here an individual calendar, which is also an object from the working time models. Here, the calendars, uh, which this is only to maintain a uh, breakdown or offline times or maintenances or vacations. So if I have offline uh, times which are unregulary or regularly, for example, Christmas, I can um, I can maintain them in the individual calendar of each resources. Um, here in the properties I have uh, in the work work centers, uh, if, if I'm correct, yeah, in the work centers, different options. The work time model already explained, the cost I think super clear. Idle time period of one day. I can set also um, the valid date, the processing hours, the cost of each processing hour, setup hours and idle times per hour. Um, which can be set manually, which doesn't, which is not required, so it's optional. But if you, the more information you have, the better the planning is. Uh, I can set the capacity, and now this is uh, gonna be really interesting. This box here, I will quickly edit it, which show you the different options what we have in the capacity check. So none means no capacity check is gonna happen in this uh, resources. But this means. I can schedule everything in the same time and no capacity check will be done. So if I have 10 production orders and all 10 are required to uh, schedule this work center as well to produce, then all 10 are gonna be scheduled in the same time on the same place. Because I don't have any capacity check, the capacity doesn't have any limitations, so I can produce everything always, anytime, uh, and and on the, in the same time. If I choose allocation plus time, it means I'm gonna check is already the utilization of my work center. Is it already reached by given production orders? If yes, then I can't I can't really allocate them because it's already blocked. It's already uh, full and the time. So if I have, uh, for example, offline times like weekends or vacations or maintenances or uh, shift models which are um, disabling this work center, then it's not going to be planned in this duration. Uh, locked means this is currently uh, not available for special reasons, either it's uh, already um, yeah, it's not anymore working. It has been replaced by other ones and you just need to see the history. Then you can lock it as well. Or if you want to lock it for a temporary period of time, you can do it also. Um, if you don't want to, for example, set the individual calendars, you can use this locked function for temporary offline uh, times. And you can choose time, which only will check the uh, shift models if it's available or not, but not the utilization, or you can only set uh, allocation to uh, check the capacity um, utilization for this work center. So this means this work center is 24 seven available, so no time restrictions given, but if there is already um, here 300 means it can uh, handle three orders or three operations in the same time. And if I set here allocations, then I will just check this box. If I have already three orders uh, scheduled in this work center, then I can't schedule the fourth one additional to it. This is the standard value. I check everything and I, wanna, I don't want to change it now. So I just 
big discard changes. So um, then I have f so many more uh, options for the work center, but I don't want to now explain all of them, but I will show you what is possible. I can choose parallel working. So if I'm having a personal, which is uh, assigned to this work center, and he is running something already, then I can uh, click this box here to say, okay, if someone is working in this work center, he can also work, for example, in another work center because it's close by or this doesn't require a um, full amount uh, of employee or the full attention of an employee. I can choose setup options, um, no optimization, for example, or um, dynamic setup times. If, for example, I have a setup matrix, then I can also maintenance uh, setup times, for example, if I had um, um, iron before on this work center and now I'm having um, aluminium, then I am having a setup time of one hour. If it's other way around, then I would have a setup time of 30 minutes, just as an example. Uh, this can be created in the setup matrix. I can assign special works, workers or personal staff to the work centers, or I can set a special activity qualifications as well. So I check qualifications and check which uh, worker has that qualification to assign this worker to the work center. Also with the tools, um, here I would put some tools like a driller or whatever, a forklift uh, or skid, um, which is usually uh, at or in this work center and usually uh, there to use. Lot sizes, uh, minimum lot size, maximum lot size and the units. Units are uh, also in the material projects here as I explained already. We have this unit, you can choose uh, anything there or just um, just create own ones. So, and groups. Groups are uh, in this case uh, like departments or teams, which can be also um, attached here. Currently, we have no one. Uh, the work worker groups are here. You first need to create them. For example, the assembly early shift. Then you can assign this group to this work center. So um, then we have work center groups, as I already mentioned. And we have the setup matrices, in this case only one uh, for the turning machines. So I would see here on the left side materials and on the right side uh, and on the top uh, line as well, uh, same material IDs. And you see if I switch from uh, 5001 to 5001 uh, to equip the lock knot, so no change is given, then I don't have any uh setup time but if i for example switch to the um, upper part then i would have 3600 seconds uh, setup time uh, or if i go to the upper part uh, unibal then i would have 5400 seconds setup time so this is the uh, dynamic setup uh, qualification um, setup matrix and yeah this can be set it as well. So the planning solution will then also uh, consider this times in the automatic planning. Um, I continue with workers. Um, you have the option to you attach nice pictures here. Uh, IDs, ID is always required. Name and information are optional, as I said. Same properties as in the work center, but few less. So I already explained the most of them. Here is also the uh, cost per hour for this employee. And that's it. So then we have in the worker uh, objects also two different kinds of qualifications which we can maintain. Either we uh, choose to set the qualifications per uh, between the work centers and the workers. Then I can choose any work center and the worker, for example, here and decide if uh, if Mrs. Sanders is qualified in the perform center uh, one, 
for setting up or processing or both. If I set this, then I should know planning solution will always consider this matrix in order to schedule uh, stuff with uh, work centers. I have also the opportunity to do the qualifications per activity. That would mean if I have, um, that would mean first of all, I need to create activities. This is uh, manually created activities uh, and the opposite in the work centers, which are all, always the ones we have in the system already. So if we have work centers and work workers, we just need to set the qualifications here in the table. If I want to do the qualifications um, recording to activities, then I first of all need to create activity qualifications such as, uh, for example, uh, training. Then I would have training here and I would set then uh, people who are required. I, like this, for example, uh, Mrs. Meyer, uh, Leah Sanders and so on, they are now um, qualified for the trainings so they can be scheduled for trainings, but this activity is currently in no routing. So then I would need to go to the uh, routings, for example, this one, and I have here the processing operation and in the workers, I am, I can then set here activity, activity groups from existing ones here. Then I can say, okay, only people who are uh, in this acti activity group or activity qualification group are allowed to be assigned from the software to do the processing and the turning lock knot. So um, we have these different options to do maintenance the qualifications, which one you want to do is uh, your decision. You can also choose both. Uh, I would always recommend to do the work center qualifications if you can uh, separate them like in this way. If the reality doesn't uh, pro provide this, then of course you can also go to the qualification activity. This is more manual and adjustable and flexible than the other one. Uh, we have production resources and tools. These are not so uh, exciting, I guess. Um, you see which, which kind of objects you could, for example, uh, set here. Drill knock, not turning tool, carpet, um, press and so on, labeling machines. Um, we have set up times, um, we have the speed factors, we have working time models, so the availability of the resources, we have the cost, capacities, so which can only use, the, uh, uh, can only handle in one operation in the same time, and the work centers where this uh, tool is allowed to be are allowed to be scheduled in and the maintenance. Um, if there is a maintenance, for example, we can set here as uh, stock times, hours of operation and uh, the pieces. And this is the part time uh, prototype type in the carrier, but not so important for our case right now. So down the bill of materials, which is also really important for planning. A bill of material means uh, we have, for example, here a federal room, uh, a spring socket, sorry, uh, it was called, that was a German name, the spring socket. And this, this, uh, this says now, or this bill of material object says now, okay, to produce this material, the material 3001, it would be a um, spring socket. I can open it here. Oh, by the way, if I always see here a blue uh, arrow, I can click it and I will jump into the object. So um, I go back to my bill of material object 3001 and my bill of material object 3001 is producing or is the receipt to produce uh, the material 3001. So this one, spring socket. Name is in this case the same and I'm select uh, and I need the routing 3001 to produce it. Um, the bill of material items are in this case uh, the raw material 3101 and I need 0 0.125 meters of 
uh, HTT role um, in order to produce, I need this raw material in order to produce this end material. So um, it means if I have materials like here, these are all, for example, these are in the um, first scenario, all every material is only a material. But the bill of material is specifies uh, if I need something to to produce this, or if I need to uh, if I need any routing to produce it, or if I need, for example, several materials just to produce one. The raw materials and end materials are always in materials general. It's general object for both. And the bill of material is separating them, so which, which is just uh, only raw material, or which is also um, uh, end material. I'm gonna check if I have here, for example, another bill of material uh, item for the chassis comfort dispatch, and I have here a uh, lot of more materials which required to produce only the 9003. So the 9003 requires, for example, these items. All of these materials. So I need. Um, I go big, make it a bit, merge it a little bit more. So now I see. Um, I need a craft paper blank, one piece of that. I need one piece of a collapsible box flat, and I need um, one of uh, Chess's Comfort. Chess's Comfort. Uh, consists of uh, one of the spring socket coated. And this also has many other materials within it. And so I can create an endless list of materials I need to, which I need in order to create this one. I can also jump to the routing <clears throat> and to see what do I really need? Uh, what do I need to do? So I need to set up process and uh, for the first operation to, for the final inspection and, and I need the processing of packing. The final uh, inspection I have. Um, three minutes of uh, processing time per unit. And in the setup I have 10 minutes of. Um, so fixed process time. So this is always a uh, fixed time for the setup. And if I have uh, something set it here, which is also calculated always per unit. So if I have 10 uh, pieces to produce, for example, then I would have um, the total processing time of 40 minutes because 10 times three would be 30 plus 10, just fixed time would be 40 minutes. Here I have two minutes, so 20 minutes extra. Um, so that's, that was now that for the bill of material. Also quite important for you because uh, if you have uh, the assembly and as we discussed uh, before, uh, you have uh, to produce the components for the final assembly. So here it is uh, quite uh, easy to, to make it. So that's that's important for your production, I think. Yes, I think this is the good idea for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can also um, like make a, uh, you can imagine the bill of material like a tree, which is split it into uh, several little uh, uh, leaves and every leaf is a material and to produce other ones, you could either need other leaves or other materials. Um, so far, so good for the bill of materials and the routings. And the final master data object I would like to show you is the priorities, uh, but not too much. Don't worry. We have uh, three much uh, three priorities out of the box, which can be adjusted or uh, just deleted from you, or create with and replace with new priorities. 
the priorities in the end are um, having always a value. For example, the chef, uh, the, the chef impo very important priority has a seven as a value, the important one has a five, the normal one has a three. And we have latency costs. Um, the cost per hour, for example, um, or uh, here we say uh, when to occur the cost. Here, after zero hours, we would have a relative cost of 15% and the relative cost for every hour. So every 24 hour, we would have 750 euros extra cost. Um, this cost is going to be also considered from the automatic planning in order to when to schedule which production order. So, um, so far so good that we finished the uh, master data. I would now switch to some uh, other options before I go to the process data. Uh, I would show you the plannings or what we find in the plannings. We have model parameters, we have automatic planning and we have gun chart. The gun chart is always uh, the control center where you can see um, all production orders. <coughs> Sorry. And we have the automatic planning um, where you can set different options for the algorithm of the software. Um, for example, here I only can choose uh, to start and I can uh, edit this page and uh, create new automatic plannings, for example, um, to set uh, different settings, to define different settings. Uh, if I, for example, want to have 10 runs and I want three to show three results to highlight and um, a, a special strategy, either scheduled forward or bottleneck based and to optimization groups uh, goals. These are seven criteria where I can set the um, priorities of different optimizations. For example, if I want to optimize my utilization, I could, for example, consider to switch this field to 100. 100 means only this is uh, most important. And uh, the, yeah, the more important it is, the higher the value should be. Um, for example, if I want to focus more on setup time and cost, I can choose here 100. Or if, I, if it's not important, I can put there also just five or 50, 45, or which, whatever I want. Um, let's not save it. I have uh, some other options like material requirement plannings. Uh, do I need to, for example, create also uh, purchase orders? Uh, should they be done by the system as well? So we, this would be also really important for you, I guess. For example, if I have um, materials which needs to be ordered because I don't have them in stock anymore, then the system is gonna uh, create purchase orders automatically. And this purchase order gonna um, also then um, have a production order which is uh, related to it. So the relationship between purchase order and production order is also automatically given if you leave this tick on. Um, here planning mode, planning types. Yeah, I think um, this is uh, something you should leave on uh, to schedule production orders and uh, schedule requests. This can be on if you have, for example, the sales also uh, attached to the system. Um, then your customers can raise uh, request. For example, a customer could request uh, 10 materials for the, any due date and you would see the request and then you can accept it or not, but the customer would see immediately if the request is, um, uh, how the request is going to be, like if it's going to be on time or not, for example. Um, yeah, maybe also something which is interesting for you, I'm not sure yet. But we can uh, do a automatic planning run. We have now four runs and four results which is gonna be showed. I see here the runs. 
here the blue uh, bar is occurring and I see three of four is gonna do and now the last one. So I have here four runs and all four are now listed. This is the best one, it's the second best, it's the third best and it's the fourth best. Um, which, these results are always um, related to these values, so the total values, and these are the production costs, with delay costs and with um, production costs and resources, which are uh, now scheduled, and this would be the most cheapest option. If I want to see it uh, after the start, I can click here to the gun chart, then I would see my result. I can also switch the different results. So uh, this, how many results you're gonna have here is uh, dependent on the uh, results you are setting here. So if you, if you have four, then you will see always four results here. And if you have 10, you would see 10 results here. Um, then you can switch between the different results, for example, from one to two, to three, to four, and you can accept anyone. For example, the first one was the best, and you can accept it, and you gonna ask you, are you sure? If you say yes, then your uh, new automatic planning result is accepted by the software and the production orders are scheduled. You can always change it, and you can always uh, do manual changes but not in the automatic planning. You cannot do anything here. I cannot switch anything here. For example, if I want this order to be on time. Um, if I want to do any manual changes, I need to press the start manual planning. If I do it. Oh, no, I'm now in the, um, I'm now in the, draft mode so I can accept it here if I want it. I didn't change anything yet and I can open here the preferences. Uh, let me attach them. So, and now I can choose, uh, like for example, I can't, I cannot change this only here in this work center because I still have restrictions on. Here the work centers, for example. If I uh, if I choose respect nothing, I can create, uh, put them everywhere I want to do any changes. I can uh, uh, select different operations and oh, didn't work. So respect nothing, respect nothing. Okay. So now I can, uh, for example, schedule every single operation into any work center, however I would feel like. Oh no, this doesn't work now. Ah, here. Turn, ignore, okay, ignore nothing. Uh, respect nothing, restrictions, respect nothing. So now I can put them also to the work centers which are not usually um, res um, not in the routings, because here the red ones are the work centers which I have also placed in the routing, which is uh, here. And if I make a double click to the production order and I go here to the routing, go to routing, I can see here the work centers. And you, if, uh, as you see here, there's always a work center assigned to every operation. And um, routings are usually built like this. In one routing, you have several operations, and every operation has several activities. It can be either waiting, setup, processing, or waiting. Uh, we have waiting twice, but that's um, the only op operation uh, activity we can have uh, twice. Setup and processing is all, only once. Uh, there's only one operation, uh, setup and processing per operation allowed, but waiting can be uh, choose twice, always before the setup and after the processing. Um, so if I want, I can like change everything here as I want now because I choose the, the manual planning and I said uh, you don't need to respect any restrictions as you remember. 
and um, if I want this uh, to schedule again automatically, I can always uh, press the automatic planning and accept the results. Then it's um, again, I cannot change it anymore. So, um, so far so good. This was the automatic planning and also a little bit of manual planning. Um, I would now go uh, continue with the process data. As you see, we have four kinds of process data, which is stock. So you have always a uh, stock where you can produce your materials in. Um, if there is no sales order, um, you have the sales orders. Um, where you can maintenance your demands, for example. Um, or you can put just like um, strategic uh, demands uh, on any dates where you need to have any, any material in a special amount. You have to purchase orders for materials which are required to buy for to produce uh, materials. In this case, um, we have the mat uh, material outputs, for example, this one. This would be the material uh, 9001. In this purchase order, which, where we need to buy stuff. So uh, we need to buy 200 to produce the uh, suspensions. And we have the production orders, um, which can be either created manually in the system. Uh, by the way, every of these process data or orders can be created manually in the system with this button. And this window is going to open, or it can be um, transferred via the API from any ERP system. Not any, but a lot of ERP systems or depends on the uh, developers. If you have motivated developers, they will mm, create an uh, interface to any uh, ERP system. Or you can um, let the production orders created by the system. For example, if you have sales orders and purchase orders uh, or sales orders, um, which can trigger also production orders like here. For the sales order we have, for this sales order, we have uh, four production orders created from the system. So, uh, last point is the reports. We have always two different kinds of reports, uh, tabulary ones and graphical ones. You said you are more the visual guy, so I will show you some visual reports. For example, the utilization. I can choose what I want to see, like if I want to see the user utilization of work centers or work center groups. Then I can click here uh, to add work center groups or I can click here to add all of them. Then I need to set the uh, time span or the interval if I want to see, for example, weeks. Then I see here the weeks where the utilization is um, high and higher or lesser. Uh, the blue ones are required capacities, so the uh, yellow ones are free capacities. Uh, in the performance center, we have, for example, uh, in this week, so I, I see only Monday, uh, the Mondays, but this means the week. Uh, so it's a whole week. I have um, almost 250 hours of um, yeah orders which is uh, blocking this uh, group. I can also stay to uh, show me the work centers in days. For a more specialized view, maybe. If I go, which looks, which is cool. Then I would see on a daily basis the utilization. So I see here's no free capacity anymore left. Yeah, I can save them. 
as a file, for example, uh, like picture files um, into this status. And that's it. So any questions so far? I'm now uh, done with the presentation of the uh, features of the most important ones, not all features. Uh, I showed you now the master data, the process data, the planning, the reports, uh, what opportunities we have, how to handle the most of them. Of course, it wasn't now the most deepest uh, session yet, but if you have any questions or any wishes which where to uh, dive deeper, we can do it. And that was nice to see also the, the reporting, I would say, because uh, from our experience, uh, for example, as I discussed with uh, people from uh, FAMO, FAMO, our digital factory in Poland, so basically they said that this reporting is very important and it brings uh, a lot of uh, value because we can analyze uh, really how it is the production because we have uh, a lot of information, a lot of uh, data inside the planning software, so basically this uh, perfect way to to make the production better, faster, and you see where you have the problems and uh, you can react fastly. So that's a lot of options in the uh, software, a lot of uh, data. So it looks like something complicated, but of course you don't need to use uh, all options and uh, you start uh, from some uh, uh, general options at the beginning. And uh, of course uh, you have uh, the space for the performance. So that's uh, that's needed. And of course, uh, we have uh, here the production feedback, which is important. So the production feedback uh, looks uh, similar actually as you have uh, in a cloud version. So mm. that's the point. So it is uh, it is uh, connected together. Yeah, I didn't show the um, assistant applications like feedback, cockpit, and so on. Uh, but if if you want, I can also uh, show you how to handle the feedback. <laughs> 